This is code.org and let's reflect. So what are the benefits of writing functions that use parameters and returns? Try to think of at least two. Now I'm going to talk about with this with you, kind of brainstorm with you. Make sure you're writing your own words and using your an own answer. Anything else is plagiarism. And you found this, your teacher will too. If I'm your teacher, I know about it. So, all right, let's think about it though. Uh, use of parameters and returns. What the heck is a parameter? Let's talk about it. A parameter is that thing inside of a function, like here, that is going to allow us to pass something. So in this, the filter function, the parameter is the length and the letter. And where that gets changed, where that happens, is when I hit run and I do something here, well, look, my on event length runs, my on event runs, and the filter function is called, so the computer says filter, what's that? Smack. Oh, I got to run this stuff. What's the length? Um, get number length drop down. That's this. So it's four. What's this? Letter. Get text letter drop down. Oh, it's A. So it grabs this stuff from up here, right? So you could think of it as a variable. Length is now, or L-E-N means four anytime you see it down here. Letter would then mean A right now anytime you see it down here. And how it does that is when we ask this chunk of code to run, this function to run, we give it those values. Here I give it an A directly, okay? So that's a parameter. It's You could almost think of it as a variable that you can use to, when you run a function, you can give it a bit of information. That way a function is more customizable, right? If you wanna reuse a function, well, if I always had this function only consider if the letter was A, that's a problem because what if they chose B? I would have to keep writing a function a bazillion times for every single tiny letter. Instead, I can use a parameter, right? I can let it pass an argument. By the way, this is an argument when you're using it. Like this is the argument. Get text is an argument. What it returns is the argument. This is the parameter. So the name of the parameter is length. But when I run filter with A, this A right here is the argument. Uh, it's kind of weird if that it makes sense. Just go with it. But anyways. Uh, it lets you be more versatile. So I can now use this function for any letter and I don't have to make a billion functions, right? It's like a variable. Instead of only being able to do A, B, C for each function, I can pass it something. What do return types do? Well, if you think about it, a return, which we use back here, a return allows you to give information back. So over here, return was allowing us to push that answer back to where we started. And so when a function's done running, the computer will start back wherever it ran. So for this instance, if I hit minus, line six says, change up this text to calculate minus. What's calculate? My function. What's my parameter? My parameter is symbol. The argument is going to be negative or minus. So symbol is like a variable equal to minus. And it uses that throughout. Once it's done running, it returns answer, which is this big, long thing right? It's going to be the number. It's going to be a space. It's going to have a plus sign. And what's it do with that? Well, it spits it out as set text. So whatever gets returned appears on the screen. So now let's think. Writing the function that uses parameter and return type. What I would say is you want to think about some of those items. Think about how you can use functions and the variety of ways that being able to use a variable or hint like a parameter, being able to pass or give that function a bit of information can help you out. With returns, I would say, think about how being able to grab stuff after a function, what you can do with that, how you can use it, how might you want to update or change things, and how might that make a function more useful? I could say in reverse, think about it if a function could never return anything. Well, that would kind of limit it, right? Because if it could never return an item, you wouldn't know entirely what happened inside. You would have to update the screen in a function always. You couldn't get anything back. Think about if you could never pass or use a parameter, you could only run that function. Think about what you might have to do. So I would think about, and again, make sure it's your answer. I'm just gonna put a, uh, think about how we can use slash versatile. I'm gonna spell this wrong as a teacher. Versatility. How think about how we can use versatility with parameter slash giving functions info information, and think about getting info slash data back. 
how could that help? So there's your starting point. Make sure you're writing your own words. And I think you got this. Go for it. 